Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be introducing the President of the United States to the show. President Trump, many thanks for joining us on the program. It's my pleasure, Carl. Look, when you attended, right, my inauguration last year with your very good friend, Michael Flatley, and by the way, please say hello, I love him. He's very talented. Lord of the Dance, what a tremendous show that is. Look, I promised yourself, and Eamon Buttle, you remember, I promised both of you, I said that I would come on and I would do the show. And thank you very much for that, President Trump. But your reason for joining us this morning is far more than just to deliver on a promise, isn't it? Right. Well, as you know, I own a very successful golf resort in Dunbeg. I do, you know, which it's really amazing. If you haven't been, I, I think you should check it out. Look, when I met your Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, in Washington on St. Patrick's Day, which is a great holiday, it's my favorite holiday, I was telling him that I would like to develop, okay, a second golf resort in Ireland, as I really love your country and I love your people and I think it would be great. You know, when I asked him, I said, look, where would you recommend as a possible location? Okay. And he spoke to me about Wexford. He said, you know, it's got beautiful beaches, right? It's on the East Coast. So the coast has a lot of water. You know, that's what I love about coasts is water. And it's great. A lot of beaches. So I got the people to start researching the area and they're doing it. And it's looking very, very promising. And have you got any recommendations from those people that have been researching the county to date? Well, look, Kiriklo it's in my sights as an ideal location. I love Kirklo, I do. So I'm interested in developing a golf resort there, right? I'm going to be contacting Tom Enright and the Wexford County Council shortly. Leo, he's told me great things about the guy. And I think, you know, he'll be very excited. He'll be very excited about my plans for Kirklo. I mean, really, everybody should be excited about my plans. They really should. I think the local authority, I'm thinking they might even give me the beach and the surrounding land for free, right? Because look, having a Trump resort, Trump, the name Trump will attract hundreds of thousands of wealthy tourists to that area year after year. And it will be so tremendous for the economy. It really will. And President Trump, I believe that you already have strong family connections here in County Wexford. Well, of course, you know, my ancestors, the Kellys, they're living in New Ross and look, They're very understated people, okay? But I can assure you that they're very, very successful people. Believe me, they're probably probably the wealthiest people in the county, believe me. They won't like me saying that, but they're they're very quiet people and they are really successful people. I wish more people were like them. And I've heard on the grapevine that you may also be considering investing in Wexford County Council's new development in Trinity Wharf in Wexford Town. Yeah, that's, well, look, that's correct. This development, it came across my desk some months ago. The local authority is looking for an investment in excess of $35 million. Although I usually don't invest in such small developments, I have an interest in this if they change the name. Because look, Trump Wharf, that's what we want to call it, Trump Wharf. Trinity, it's very old, very biblical. We want to be 2018 leading, cutting edge Trump war. And look, because I'm in contact with world leaders daily, and I am, believe me, I've got a call right after this with China. Look, I would have no problem sourcing great companies to lease the properties, okay, and make this one of the best developments in the country, bar none. Now, of course, we also have Rossler Europort on our doorstep, which many will say is completely underdeveloped. Right. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Carl, because look, I've got really big plans for this port. OK, I spoke to Leo Veradiker about this also. He likes to talk. So we talked about this. He told me that the port needs an investment of, of 60 million, 60 million. So, look, he put me in touch with Minister Shane Ross. As you know, look, the Chinese are buying up all the ports all over the world. That's what they do. The Chinese, they're flourishing. They need somewhere in Europe to distribute from, right? Because look, none of the ports in Europe can cater to the mega ships, right? Coming in from China. So this is where I see a major opportunity for Roslair. It's going to be, look, we're going to make it China's gateway to Europe. It really will be. So I plan to speak to the minister, Ross, about buying the port. And we're going to invest $1 billion to develop it. $1 billion. And look, it will become the most successful port in the world. 
Where do you see the traffic? It's going to be bigger than Rotterdam, much bigger, by the way, and busier than Shanghai. It's going to be incredible. And on the topic of China, I understand that you're collaborating with them to bring one of your election promises to fruition. You've got really great sources, Carl. This is why I like you. Look, this is something which I've been keeping under wraps here in the U.S. You know, look, as you know, during the campaign, I promised to build a wall, right, to keep the Mexicans out of America. And not all Mexicans. This is where the media, you know, they tear it up. Look, the bad people coming in from Mexico. So we need to stop it. But the wall, it can't be any wall, right? It has to be a wall which will make this country great again. So I've been thinking about who can build a wall right? Well, China knows how to build a great wall. They've already done it once, Carl. You know they have and you've seen it. And there are no Mexicans in China, right? Which means their wall works. It works. President Trump, you could not have missed the wall-to-wall coverage over the past few weeks regarding Stormy Daniels' allegations with yourself. What are your thoughts on this? Look, Carl, we're in a time where people are bringing up allegations out of nowhere. You look at the news every day. This person did this. This person did that. But look, nothing was said at the time when it happened. Right, Carl? I mean, these are incidents which happened, what, 20, 30 years ago? And now these people are coming out. Believe me, this woman, look, she's jumping on the bandwagon like they all do. They're jumping on the bandwagon and they want to get their name out in the media, which they do because they what they have no life. And so that's what she's doing. It's a media play. That's all it is. She just wants to get her name out there so she can get more hits or whatever she's doing. I don't even know, quite frankly, what she's doing. So that's where I stand on it. It's all false allegations. And it look, it's going to wither away. She needs to find peace with herself so she can move on and stop these frivolous cases against me because it's all baloney, right? And it's going to lead nowhere. I mean, who is she? What does she do? She, you know, look, I'm the president of the United States and I'm dealing with this person. She's not even worth my time, really. She isn't. President Trump, how is your relationship with Melania these days with all of the allegations that have come out since you've become president? Melania is a great woman and she's a smart woman and she knows what really happens. She knows what's going on. She knows who's after what. You know, it's all baloney. It's all garbage. And it really, and I hate to say it, fake news. It's all fake news. There's a lot of fake things that are being put out there. But Melania knows what's true and she knows what happened and she knows where we're going. And she's very proud. She's very proud of what I'm doing. And I think you can call her. I think, I, I think she'd be willing to come on the show and talk to you about uh, what she feels because she's ve- she talks to me all the time, believe it or not. She talks to me all the time and she always commends me and she's saying what a great, great job I'm doing. She really does. She thinks I'm doing a tremendous job. And what is your game plan with regard to Putin? Because many will say that you're playing Russian roulette. Look, Russia, we're talking to Russia all the time. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of cards in play with Russia and we're trying to lead the way in regards to what we're doing with Russia. We're going to do wonderful things. I think people are really going to be impressed when they see what we do. They're going to say, wow, you're doing great work with Russia. People are going to be impressed. We can't say what we're going to, you know, because you can't tell your enemy the game plan. But look, people, everyone's going to be impressed. They're going to be sitting in my golf resort in Ireland going, wow, look at what they did with Russia. That's really impressive. And President Trump, you're the only president worldwide that I've ever seen that has come out and taken credit for a rising stock market. Look, there's a lot of things that are happening. Okay, look, the stock market, it's much better than it ever was, believe me. People are confident because they know that I'm a leader, right? Obama, they weren't confident, right? They didn't have confidence in the guy, so they didn't want to spend their money. But look, they see me in the White House and they say, well, we're going to be safe. We're going to be protected and we can spend some of our hard-earned money. And they're getting it back. You look at the tax bill that we just did. You look at these corporations that are now giving money back to their employees. I mean, it's great. You've got mega corporations, Disney, Apple, Royal Caribbean. These people are giving money back. And that never happened under Obama. And quite frankly, I don't think it's ever happened under anyone. And as a successful entrepreneur and now the most powerful man in the world, what advice have you got for Ireland? Believe me, I love Ireland. It really is. It's really a great country. But you need more business people. You do. You need more business people. 
in politics you do. And I would encourage you to get into politics because your country needs you. And President Trump, I know you're a busy man. Well, look, before I finish, Carla, I only agreed to come on the show because of Southeast Radio's great reputation. You've got a really tremendous reputation because there's no fake news, right? And I commend Eamon Buttle. I really do. I commend the guy. He's really great. And the team for all of the great work in which they're doing. Believe me, it's really, really great, guys. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.